Hi, I'm Bonnie and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be talking about what cruise line should you take? I know that's a, a question a lot of people have, like which one's the best, what should I do? I don't really know which one to take. I'm kind of unfamiliar. This is all foreign water to me. What, you know, so I will clear up that information with some of the main names you hear about and, and I'll give you a little background on what they are like so that you make the right decision. you have to decide are you traveling as a couple are you are you high energy are you just want to hang out or are you, are you do you have a bunch of kids with you do you are you bringing grandma and grandpa with you I mean all those things are factors in how you can consider what it is you want to be doing I mean if you're traveling frequently and is it about destination is it about the ship is it about the crowd is it about the price I mean all those things are factors Every cruise ship has a distinct personality, and so I will talk a little bit about these. Let's get started. One is Royal Caribbean. In Royal Caribbean, they have a lot of mega resort type ships, Oasis class ships, just for an example. They kind of are Las Vegas style. They, they have about 6,000 plus passengers on board. Du Soleil Aqua Show as well. One of the perks of being on the Royal Caribbean Allure of the Seas and having a boardwalk balcony room is that you can witness the water show. So we were on the ninth floor and this is what we saw. There's never a boring moment and kids love it. So this is a, a fan favorite for kids. Royal Caribbean's heaviest presence is in the Caribbean and in Europe. They have about seven ships in Europe. They are starting up this summer out of NASA and so people are flying to NASA. You have to be vaccinated and then you're able to take a cruise around the Caribbean and they also are doing a cruise out of Bermuda for this summer until the U.S. ports open. I've been on Allure twice and they have all kinds of activities. So. <laughs> Number two is Celebrity. Celebrity, which is also owned by Royal Caribbean, is a smaller ship. The presence is a little bit sophisticated. It's a not a party crowd. It's more of a sophisticated, seasoned crowd. It is not luxury, but it's pretty close to it. It's fine dining, much updated art, and just kind of what's current and like trending on in food and so service is really good and people really like it. Number three is Carnival. Carnival cruise ships is always known as the fun ship. It's lively, it's fun, it's a party, it's good times, it's a lot of interaction with the crew. Great for kids, it's affordable and it's, it definitely attracts the crowd that can drive into the port probably from as much as five hours away and also maybe fly in from a, a short Short distance more of a frequent flyer type cruiser and it is someone that you know wants a good time but isn't necessarily wanting the top of the line of anything just a good time families go on board but you won't find the super mega resort feel on carnival they are trying to come out with a new ship i believe it's called the mardi gras that will be a little bit more mega resort but at this point they're a lot smaller than royal caribbean Royal Caribbean has about a 20% larger ship than, than Carnival, but the whole idea is have a good time. It's kind of loud, neon, crazy, fun times. And they do a lot of activity. So the ratio of crew to passengers is a little less than some ships. It's a little more crowded. I don't know what they'll do with the COVID uh, protocols coming, but they are primarily a US port cruise line and Caribbean is, is their market. At this point, they're not traveling. I think I've heard July is the rumor, but we'll see. Number four is Princess. This is a line that is owned by Carnival. It caters to 
a lot of retirees and couples or family reunion type things where people are trying to get together. It's low key, but people have a lot of fun with it. It has good food and good service. Classy, but not flashy. Big presence in Alaska for the Alaska market. And I have never traveled on Princess. I am planning on doing that in January, so I'll let you know how that goes. Number five is Norwegian Cruise Lines. Norwegian Cruise Line will be traveling out of Jamaica this summer. And they also have an itinerary out of Greece and they will be having vaccinated only passengers, meaning that if you have children that are not vaccinated, they cannot travel until they said October. So keep that in mind. So with Norwegian Cruise Lines, it is a mega style ship as well. They are priding themselves on freestyle dining, which means there is no actual assigned times. You just dine when you'd like. The dining room and the buffet are free, but the specialty restaurants, and I believe they say they have about 27 places to eat on board, those do cost you. And um, the actual activities for kids, there's the water park, that type of thing. If they do the racetrack, laser tag, or the arcade, that would be extra. And so it is a more relaxed crowd. It's optional, uh, get dressed up for formal wear. It's just your choice if you'd like to do that or not. So it's just a little different take on a cruise. Just know that maybe the price you're paying might not be the complete price you'll be paying because if you start to enjoy all these other activities that are costing more your bill will be larger at the end obviously number six is msc and msc is also starting to make a presence in the caribbean it is a mega style resort ship as well it's swiss based but they've kind of made their way over to the caribbean to attract the u.s market it is an international crowd they have lately had some reasonable prices posted but i haven't heard if they have done anything in the Caribbean without coming to the US first. So I think they are looking at July target dates, but it's hard to say. And number seven is Holland America. Holland America is also a line that's pretty popular and they're going to be in Europe this summer and even in October, I believe they have something going on with uh, Rotterdam. It's like a 150th anniversary, but they've been traveling around since 1873 and they are pretty much mid-sized ships that cater to couples and retirees. I've, I've taken a Holland America cruise with my kids to Alaska one. They had a really good time because the kids club was so small, they got a lot of attention, so it wasn't kid heavy, but I would say it's mainly geared towards couples and retirees. Cruise Lines who also is making a presence this summer and they are going out of Nassau. They have a couple itineraries. They are definitely a luxury line. They are expensive. Everything's included. They, they pride themselves on elegance and one-on-one -on -one service, premium wines, and a sophisticated clientele that has pretty much been traveling for a while. They're very well-traveled. There's a lot of in-depth cultural excursions and that type of thing. I wouldn't think that a child maybe would have that fun of a time on that. You probably want to save that for Royal Caribbean or Carnival. I hope that some of this has helped you figure out maybe what cruise line is best for you personally. It's fun to kind of try different lines to see what they have to offer and I just like Royal Caribbean for just everything that it has to offer. I seem to always fall into that middle market where it's it's enjoyable fun fresh and lots going on but not too gaudy or party because that's just not where i am these days but i'm sure that you know whatever you choose you'll have a good time maybe ask a travel agent if you're unsure or just call up on the number and and talk to the the travel agents themselves next week i plan to do something about the places you should be booking on a cruise and then the next one will be of the places you shouldn't be booking on a cruise so until next time please subscribe below for more future videos like this one and also check out my videos about my northern european cruise and the other things that i've done when i've cruised thanks for watching until next time